Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Get out your King James Bibles and turn to 1 John chapter 3. Okay? I had a brother in Christ for question and answer. A brethren for question and answer. Could you explain the meaning of 1 John 3 verses 8 and 9? And before we can do that, we've got to get in context. Okay? I'm learning from this study that a lot of people uh, out there, the sinless perfectionist preaching, they probably misuse these scriptures. But let's go through them. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Called. Remember that. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, with the sons of God, even so, it says we are the sons of God. Remember, there's sons of God in title, and there's sons of God in practice. Okay, what does it mean to become the sons of God? But first, what is the sons of God? Uh, Job 1, chapter 1, verse 6, and Job 2, you don't have to turn there, but Job 2, verse 1. Let's read 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. See, Satan's not an angel. The sons of God in the Old Testament are angels. Who's God? Jesus Christ. He's the angel of the Lord. Okay, it's a whole other study we'll get into about the uh, counterfeit, the ultimate counterfeit. Okay, Satan's not a star. Okay, angels are stars in the Bible. But the sons of God is referring to angels in the Old Testament. All of them. Job 2.1, we read, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. All the angels fallen, they haven't all fallen yet, it's, it's a future event, but the bad angels, if you want to say that, and the good angels, doesn't matter. All the angels have to stand before God and give an account of themselves. Satan has to give an account of himself before God. But we read there, the sons of God are angels. But it says, now are we the sons of God. Romans 8, verse 18. Go ahead and turn to Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that, there, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Though we see it again. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. We've already done a study on this, so I'll just touch on it again. Bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Some brethren are misusing glorious liberty and trying to apply it for today. The glorious liberty it's talking about here is there's going to come a day where we're going to be freed from this body of flesh. We're going to be freed from the law of sin. Today we have liberty. We've been freed from the law of sin and death. But there's going to come a day where we're going to be freed from the law of sin and sin is done away with. That's why it's called the glorious liberty of the children of God. It's a future event that hasn't happened yet. Right now, we're only two-thirds redeemed. Our soul is redeemed, and our spirit's redeemed. But this body, this body of flesh, is not redeemed yet. Okay? Be careful to not misuse that and say glorious liberty for today. This glorious liberty is being freed from the law of sin. Law's been done away with and defeated. Law's not, in, sin's not in our life. And that'll help us when we get further down on these verses to get to 1 John 3, 8, and 9. Verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. All creation has to deal with this body of flesh. Okay. It's corruptible and it ages and falls apart. Okay. And we'll get to the verse which says this, this corruption, corruption, now that says there that we're delivered from the bondage of corruption. This corruption, I'm not free from the bondage of corruption yet. This corruption must put on incorruption. This mortality must put on immortality. Okay. 
For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also. That's how we know it's saved and lost. This is just talking about the state of this body right here that everyone has to put up with. Okay? We're no longer under the law of sin and death, as lost people are, but we're still under the law of sin. We still have to deal with sin. Sin is still in our lives. We're struggling with it. We're fighting it. We're trying to keep it down. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us with liberty. But ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. We are, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then, then do we with the patience wait for it. Why did I mention that? Because it talks about hope in the passage of 1 John chapter 3. The blessed hope. It talks about being sons of God. <laughs> My rooster's going off. It talks about being the sons of God. That hasn't happened yet. We might be able to say, yeah, in title, we are called the sons of God. In title, that's why it says called. But when will we actually be fully and completely sons of God? At the catching away of the body of Christ. When this corruption shall put on incorruption. When this mortality shall put on immortality. Okay. When Jesus, uh, when they were trying, I always bring this up, when they tried to trip up Jesus, uh, the Sadducees, who don't believe in the resurrection, tried to trip up Jesus and said, well, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? He said, they, they're neither married nor given marriage, ma neither married nor given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay, we're going to be as the angels. There's going to be a day where we're going to have incorruptible flesh like the angels do. 1 John 3.3, 3. go back to 1 John, verse 3.3. 3. I just want to point that out. It's talking about sons of God. What are the sons of God? Old Testament angels. New Testament, it's talking about Christians. When we get caught up, we will become the sons of God. Like I said, we might have it entitled, but we're not fully redeemed yet. We're sealed until the day of redemption. We're waiting for that day of redemption. We're groaning. Our body is groaning more than the lost world because... We desperately don't want to sin against God anymore because of our love for the Lord and His Word. We don't want to sin against Him anymore. We just we do sometimes when we fail Him. We got That's why the Bible says, "If any man come after me, he needs to deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me." And we'll get to some verse in here where it talks about you're, He's faithful for, to forgive. Even a Christian, when we sin as a Christian, God's faithful to forgive us. But 1 John 3, 3, it says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I've always taught this, brothers and sisters of Christ, that when you're looking for that blessed hope, and we're going to get into some verses here, but when you're looking for that blessed hope, it's not just me setting out here, even though I like to do it sometimes, setting out here looking at the clouds. That's not what it's about. Okay? It's about you cleaning up your life, letting God clean up your life. Say it that way. Thy word... I'm getting ahead of myself. Sanctify for thy truth, thy word is truth. You're supposed to have a life of sanctification, and God will start cleaning up your life. And you're doing your best to purify yourself as He is pure. But you'll never be 100% purified until the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay. You'll never, you'll always have to struggle with sin until the day you die. Temptation until the day you die. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Remember what we were talking about there? It says, And every man hath this hope. It was talking about the sons of God. We're not going to actually become, fully become the sons of God until the catching away of the body of Christ. That's for the hope, that blessed hope. Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of, our, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Redeem us. Remember, we're sealed into the day of redemption. There's going to come a time where God's going to redeem us from all iniquity. Sin's going to be gone. We're not going to have to fight sin. We're not going to be struggling with sin. We're going to have an incorruptible body. Sin has no more dominion, period, through and through. We're freed from the law of sin and death. Now we're going to be freed from the law of sin that Paul talked about. Paul said that with my mind I serve the law of God, but with this flesh the law of sin. Because we're still in this corruptible flesh. Okay, redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. 
See, we try to purify self in this life. Absolutely, that's what we're supposed to do. But there's going to come a day where Jesus is going to come down and purify us completely, fully, no more struggling with sin. Sin has absolutely zero place in our lives. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Today we're doing our best to sanctify ourselves. But as we keep getting down, it's going to talk about how we... It talks about not being able to sin. As Christians today, we still sin. So it's not talking about... This whole passage is not talking about us present tense. It's talking about a future event. Okay. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That I might not sin against thee. I hide God's word in my heart with all, with all I can, and I still fail the Lord sometimes. I still give in to temptation sometimes. Okay, I'm still a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. Okay, but how do we fight sin today? The Word of God, by the Holy Spirit. He comes in and helps us with that, the law of sin, to fight the law of sin. Okay. Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 119.9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. 1 John 1, 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, as it's talking to saved sinners, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This day in this life, we can ask God for forgiveness and God will forgive us. There still might be some consequences, flesh consequences, but God will forgive us. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says if you live by the flesh, you shall die. There's still consequences. I mean, God will forgive you, ultimately, but there's sometimes that if you don't take care of your body, and, and you say, Lord, forgive me for not taking care of this body, you're not going to get an instant perfect body just like that. You're going to have to deal with this body. Sometimes you can reverse it, sometimes you can't. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's talking up there, 1 John, go back to 1 John 3.3. 3, it says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Remember what we read there. Jesus is going to come back. He's going to redeem us from all iniquity. And he's going to purify us fully and completely. Unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We get to serve the Lord for all eternity. Praise the Lord. We get to rule, hopefully, a lot of us get to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Talking about Jesus. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. And they'll try to grab this saying, Well, see, today we're sinless perfected. It's talking about a future event. Let's keep going. Verse 7. Little children... Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Let no man deceive you. Even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, people say, well, what's that saying? It's talking about a future event. Right now, there's, let no man deceive you. Okay? There's going to come a time period where there's a future event we're going to be talking about. We already talked about it, the catching away, that blessing hope, the catching away. There's a future event that's going to separate the truly saved from the, true, from the fakers and the false, the people that are lost. Okay, But it, what it brings in here real quick, and I'm getting ahead of myself, it talks about how Satan, he was the first person to sin. Okay. The devil sinneth from the beginning. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which does weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. 14 I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. Satan, you know when sin actually entered into existence? Satan was the first one. He brought sin into existence. That's why it puts the sides up. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. There's only two sides. There is no in-between. 
Today we get taught the lost world tries to deceive people. Oh, you can be an atheist and, and you can be this or you can be that and you don't have to believe in God or Satan and therefore you're neutral or you're not even on either. No, you're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. Atheist, they're on Satan's side. Anybody else who denies God, capital G God, Satan's side. Okay. Matthew 25, 41. Remember what it said. Then shall... Matthew 25, 41. I'll pause for a second. Remember, you can always pause the video in between verses. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay? Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Okay? It says everlasting fire. Hell and the lake of fire. Okay? They were created for the devil and his angels. That's what they were created for. Okay? That's why they're. That's why it says you're of your father the devil. When you're lost and you go to hell, you're going to hell where your father's going. And Satan. Okay? Destroying the works of the devil, what we just read there. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, Behold. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the death shall, and dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, that's how we know it's talking about a future event, freeing us from corruption. We, we are corruptible right now. If we're into corruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. People say, well, what about the cross? God, Jesus Christ overcame death at the cross. He got the keys that talks about. The keys of David. Um, and really, he's got the keys now. All judgment's been given to the Son. But the true victory he's going to have is at the catching away of the body of Christ. He's going to come back. These are mine. Satan can no longer touch us. Satan can no longer tempt us. Can no longer try to mess us up or whatever. You have no authority or power or anything, period. Boom. True victory. How many of us want that day? <laughs> I keep saying, Lord, can it happen today? And you know what? When we read that verse, it talked about the glorious liberty of the children of God. I have to point something out real quick. I had to correct myself. God corrected me. And then I correct, you know, agreed with the Lord. It says there, at the back it says, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we wait with patience wait for it. We need to be patient. I keep saying, Lord, why not today? Why not today? And now the Lord keeps bringing that verse to, to mind saying, wait, didn't I just say you have to wait patiently? You gotta be patient. The day will come, you gotta be patient. The day will come where you get caught up because you die, your soul gets caught up, or the catching away of the body of Christ might happen in your lifetime. Might happen in our lifetime. We're to live every day like we could get caught up at any moment, whether it's through death or the catching away of the body of Christ. But we're to be patient. Be careful about just always spending all your time just, oh Lord, please come back today. Oh, Lord, why can't you come back? Be careful. We're supposed to be patient. And while we're being patient, we're doing our best to live a life of Christ. Sanctification, personal walk with Jesus Christ. Okay. But that's destroying the works of the devil. Turn back to 1 John 3, 9. How do we know this is still talking about a future event? The sons of God. We're not fully the sons of God yet. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Remember what we read back there. Jesus is going to come down and we're, this corruption is going to put on incorruption. I was trying to look for that verse, but... Uh, cause I want to say it right, but the Lord, like I said, He's going to... Uh, we're going to be created, we're going to be like him. 
that we read at the very beginning there. Uh, Behold what manner of love, uh, 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay. But he's, we're going to, uh, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. It's not talking about the bo being born again today as a Christian, being a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's talking about the catching away of the body of Christ. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. There's going to come a time where there's going to be a distinction and there's going to be a separation. No more questioning, is this person saved? Is that person saved? There's going to be a distinction. Why? Let's keep reading. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. When we get an in, That's the whole point of being called an incorruptible body. We cannot sin. Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, manifest, made, made light. There's no more questioning it. You can tell who's saved and who's lost. And the children of the devil, those are the two sides. One gets manifest, the other one gets manifest too because they get left behind. They still have their corruptible body. Okay. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that love, loveth not his brother. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is going to be that dividing moment, dividing moment, okay, that separates who's truly saved and who's truly lost. But people will try to grab these verses and say, John's talking about right today, right now, we're supposed to be sinlessly perfect, that we can't sin right now. No, we can Okay. Remember, you compare Scripture with Scripture. It's talking about the sons of God. When we become the sons of God, when we get that incorruptible body, okay? And this, the children of God are manifest. We're going to be shown who's truth, who's true, who's real, and who's fake. There'll be a dispensational change coming soon that will separate the truly saved from the lost. That's what that whole verse is talking about when you're reading through there. There's going to be a separation. There's going to be a big event that separates this dispensation, which we call the church age, but it's from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay, so that's what brings in a New Testament. It's the death of the testator. Brings in a New Testament. That's in Hebrews. All right. That's the church age. But before the church age ends and the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year time period of Jacob's trouble starts, there's going to be a huge event that happens that changes into that dispensation. What is that event? It's the catching away of the body of Christ. That's how we're going to find out who was truly saved and who was lost. Today we say, Matthew, we use like Matthew 15, 14, say, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Okay, let them alone. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 9 says, I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not to altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that be called, called, not is, but called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, which such a one know not eat? For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do ye not judge them that are within? But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. You see, brethren, we say, okay, I can't fellowship with the lost world. Then we have brethren that come in, and some of them are false, and we say, okay, we're starting to see some things that see that false with sin, trying to bring sin in, trying to go against the scriptures. Okay, we're going to put you out. Sometimes it's just a brother in Christ that's struggling with sin that doesn't want to give it up. And you say, okay, I'm going to have to put you out of the fellowship temporarily. And you make sure to always have a door there for them to come back when they're saved. Uh, you know, they repent, they forsake, they get back to their walk with the Lord, and there's a door there for them to come back. Always make sure there's a door there. But whether we put them out because we think they're lost, or we put them out because, you know, they're struggling with sin to the point where they just are keeping or choosing to keep the sin, um... There's going to come a judgment. Okay, remember, those that you put without, God judgeth. We judgeth those that are within. 
We're to judge the body of Christ. We're to judge one another, correct one another, help one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, to stay, keep our eyes looking for that blessed hope, the great judgment, the great day of judgment, you know, if you want to say it like that, uh, where God is going to separate the truly saved from the lost. Now, I know this might have been a longer answer than you intended to, but um, I'll link the, there's an audio study by Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries called The Pre-Tribulation Rapture Judgment. It's a very, it's an old study audio, and it's a really good one. And he talks about how it's going to be a judgment that day, and he goes through a lot of more scriptures than we have. Um, that's what these verses are talking about, Brother uh, in Christ, I couldn't remember if it because I didn't put the name down, brother or sister, but brethren that are asking these, these questions. That's what this is talking about. It's talking about a future event. There will come a day where we will be sinless. We will put on a body of incorruption. We will become the sons of God. This, uh, we're sealed. This, this person, I'm pointing at me, that's sealed until the day of redemption will be redeemed someday. It will happen. I know sometimes it feels like it's just going to be a million years out there, but it will happen someday. It could happen any day. I can get caught up in the next day or two. Uh, you know, someone. That's why when we preach the gospel to people, we tell them they need to hurry up and get saved because you don't know if they could die tomorrow. God could say, "Okay, you've done your part. You did your best." Or you know, sometimes Christians can get really messed up in sin, and God said, "Okay, I'm bringing you home." But he can also say, you're done, you've done great work, there's other people that are going to be stepping up, and I'm bringing you home. Okay, We could die and go home any day, we, uh, as far as going up, and the catching away of the body of Christ can happen any day. Okay? So that's what that verse is talking about. Don't let anybody grab those verses and try to say, well, you've got to be sinlessly perfect. I don't teach that. I know a lot of the brethren out there don't teach that, Okay, that are good Bible-believing, God-fearing men that, that I support. We don't teach that, okay? You're going to sin as a sinner. But remember, God is faithful to forgive. Okay. And there's a day going to come that you can get so depressed, you can get so down about your sin, about struggling with sin. You're supposed to get convicted by your sin, present tense. But I'm talking about you can get really depressed about and be a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, when it comes to your, uh, the struggle with sin. Nope, the thought came in, I had to kick it out five times today, I had to kick that thought out of my head. Fifty times today, I had to kick this thought out of my head. These temptations hit me twenty times today, and I had to start singing a hymn, and I had to start quoting some scripture, I had to go do a Bible study, I had to leave the house and go for a walk and talk with the Lord and, and prayer and everything. And you get so frustrated with all the temptations and the fight that you have with this flesh. That verse is something that's a blessed hope. It's to remind us that there's going to be a day where we won't have to struggle with this body of sin anymore. There's no more fighting among the brethren. There's no more disagreements. None of that stuff. Go on. We're going to be incorruptible bodies. More to, we're going to, throw, to shed mortality for immortality. And we're going to spend eternity of one mind, one body, no fighting, no struggling with sin, serving the Lord for all eternity. So... I want to leave it at that, brother, sister of Christ. And so hopefully that helped answer your question. So be careful. Don't let anybody deceive you. Okay. Uh, remember the Bible says, let no man deceive you, because that day shall not come unless there be a falling away first. Okay. There's a falling away today. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and hang in there, brother, sister of Christ. It's getting close. We're almost ready to go home.